Every year, nine out of 10 Darwin Awards go to men. Explosions, fireworks, and fatal leaps from 24th story windows. But here's the twist behind nature's experiment, why men win both Darwin Awards and Nobel Prizes. The same gender responsible for the world's dumbest deaths also claims 97% of Nobel Prizes in physics and chemistry and fills 99 of the world's top 100 chess grandmaster slots. How can men dominate both catastrophic failure and unparalleled genius while women cluster near the average? The answer isn't prejudice or luck. It's an evolutionary gamble built into our DNA. But what is the secret force pushing men to both extremes? The numbers tell a story few are ready to confront. Nobel Prize ceremonies look almost like a reunion of men. Since 1901, the Nobel in physics has gone to 225 men and just five women. That's about 98% male, a number that barely budges even when you add chemistry. The Fields Medal, mathematics' highest honor, is even more lopsided. 63 men and one woman ever since 1936. The only exception in nearly a century is Mariam Mirzakhani, an Iranian mathematician who won in 2014 for work on the geometry of curved surfaces. Her win made headlines because it was so rare, not because the field had suddenly balanced out. Chess is no different. Scan the top 100 grandmasters, 99 are men. These are not small sample sizes or old statistics. They're current, official tallies. Even as more women enter science and math, the upper echelons stay almost entirely male. It's not just a fluke of Nobel committees or chess federations either. The same pattern shows up in global math Olympiads, the International Physics Olympiad, and elite university faculty rosters. The numbers don't come from one country or era. They're global and persistent, updated every few years, and the imbalance barely moves. Every time the world hands out its most coveted prizes for intellectual achievement, the outcome is almost always the same. Men crowd the stage, while women's names are missing from the roles. Not because there aren't brilliant women, but because something is pushing the male distribution out to both extremes. The next question is whether this pattern holds in other domains like business and leadership, or if it's just a quirk of academic prizes. In the world of big business, the pattern doesn't just hold, it gets even sharper. Glance through the Fortune 500 list and you'll find a sea of suits, but almost all of them are men. Out of every 100 CEOs at America's largest companies, 95 are male. That's not just a blip or a historical hangover, it's the current official tally. The same story repeats at the very top of tech, finance, and billion-dollar startups. Think of the faces on magazine covers and the names on earnings calls. Even as more women enter business schools and climb the corporate ladder, the corner office stays overwhelmingly male. This isn't about one company or one country. The Fortune 500 is a cross-section of industries, backgrounds and leadership styles, yet the result is nearly identical to what we saw in Nobel Prizes and elite math. Men dominate both the boardroom and the back page of the business section, whether the news is about record profits or spectacular flameouts. The numbers are so lopsided that it almost starts to look like a statistical trick until you realize the same pattern pops up in the UK, Japan, Germany, and pretty much every major economy with reliable data. So what's going on? Why does the same gender crowd the stage at the world's most celebrated science awards and fill the C-suite at the world's biggest companies? The answer isn't just about talent or opportunity. Something deeper is shaping who ends up at the very top and, as we've seen, who ends up at the very bottom. Biology might have a surprising explanation. Imagine a crowded funnel, but only one exit. That's what reproduction looks like in mammals. Every female is a precious bottleneck. Her body can only handle so many pregnancies and each one takes months of investment. Lose just a few females and an entire population's future shrinks fast. But males, one can father hundreds of offspring if he gets the chance. Nature, it turns out, can afford to be a lot more reckless with them. This isn't just a quirk of biology textbooks. It's a hardwired system shaped by millions of years of trial and error. 
When a species relies on females to keep the next generation going, evolution stacks the deck in their favor. Female traits cluster tightly around the average, like a well-calibrated machine that rarely malfunctions. The goal is reliability. No wild experiments, no big risks. There's simply too much at stake if something goes wrong. Males, on the other hand, are nature's test pilots. With so many more of them than needed, evolution can roll the dice, trying out wild new traits, extreme behaviors, and risky gambles. Most of these experiments fail. Think of the countless unlucky males who never reproduce. But every so often, a new mutation or bold strategy pays off, and that male's genes spread far and wide. The cost of losing a few reckless males is low, but the payoff for a breakthrough can be huge. This basic math, bottlenecked females, expendable males, sets up a system where male traits are spread out much wider. That's the root of why men are overrepresented at both the top and bottom of so many human achievements and disasters. Dr. Morales leans forward, hands folded. The story, she says, starts deep in our DNA. Every male carries just one X chromosome, while females have two. That single X means any gene, good or bad, on it gets expressed with no backup copy to soften the blow. So if there's a rare mutation that boosts spatial reasoning or one that tanks impulse control, it's all or nothing for men. In women, the second X can mask the wildest swings, keeping most traits closer to average. But genes are only part of the picture. Before birth, a flood of testosterone shapes the developing male brain and body. The dose isn't the same for every fetus, and the effects are unpredictable. Some boys get a heavy hit, others much less. This prenatal hormone surge tweaks everything from risk appetite to systemizing abilities, stretching the range of possible outcomes. The result? Wider behavioral spread, with more males at both extremes. The reckless, the brilliant, and sometimes both, at once. Sexual selection only amplifies the effect. Over generations, the most successful risk takers, those who win, survive, or dazzle, pass on their genes while failed experiments immediately disappear. Nature keeps rolling the dice, testing new combinations, and the male distribution keeps stretching at the edges. It's not just about who's smarter or stronger on average, it's about the odds of producing outliers geniuses, daredevils, and, inevitably, a few spectacular mishaps. IQ tests, for all their controversy, do something strange when you plot the results by sex. The average score sits right at 100 for both men and women, but the spread, the standard deviation, is wider for men. That means more men at both the high and low ends. In large datasets, men make up well over half of those scoring above 140 and below 70, even though the averages are identical. The same pattern appears in autism diagnoses. For every girl on the spectrum, there are about four boys. Researchers call autism an extreme male brain condition, and the numbers back it up. The male distribution stretches further in both directions, producing more outliers. On the genius end, and the other end too. This isn't just about test scores, it's about how brains are wired from the start. The same pattern stretches beyond brains and boardrooms. Prisons are almost all male clubs. 93% of inmates are men. On the streets, the story repeats. Men make up 80% of the homeless population. But it's not just failure at the bottom. Flip to the world of patents, and 91% of inventors filing for new ideas are men. Even the record books can't escape this trend. The tallest and shortest adults ever measured are both men. Whether it's breaking society's rules or breaking new ground, the extremes stack up on both ends. The male curve doesn't just bulge at the top, it sags at the bottom, filling out the tails that shape the world's harshest and most spectacular outcomes. Since 1990, men have received 90% of Darwin Awards and 97% of Nobel Prizes in physics and chemistry. Across IQ data, men make up the majority of both geniuses and those with intellectual disabilities. These extremes are echoed in fields from chess, where 99% of top players are male, to prisons, where 93% of inmates are men. 
The greater male variability hypothesis, supported by genetic and evolutionary evidence, explains why male trait distributions are wider, not higher, than those of females. Yet questions remain, such as the exact impact of culture, opportunity, and individual experience. What is clear is that these biological patterns shape achievement gaps and risk profiles across society. Equality of opportunity does not erase the fact that means can be identical while outcomes differ at the extremes. Both male variability and female reliability are essential strategies in nature's experiment. As the data shows, neither approach is superior, each is vital for human survival.